Hey guys, hello. Are you guys here? Show of hands naman po sa comments. So I know that you guys are here. We'll begin shortly, guys. Just give us a minute. Uh, well, I got you here, guys. You can ask questions already. Um, we'll, we'll begin shortly. Uh, just send in your questions and our mods will, will filter through them and will send the questions to me and I'll ask them to talk of myself. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Could you guys maybe comment an emoji to start of the stream so I know that you guys are here? Okay, I guess we'll start. Hey everybody, welcome to the Unreal Movie Club. This is Armand, and tonight we're joined by Todo Dayao, the director of the new film Midnight in a Perfect World, available for viewers to watch on Upstream PH. Dodds, thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. <laughs> right, so Hi, could everyone. you tell us a little bit about uh, what Midnight in a Perfect World is about? Uh, it's kind of difficult to describe. It's it's a horror film. It's about an um, alternate timeline of Manila, sort of, and uh, it it's it centers around this uh, urban legend of a mysterious blackout that happens in random parts of the city. Uh, the rumor has it that if you get caught out in one of these blackouts, you're never heard of again. You're never heard from again. And you literally get erased. At least that's the, that's the, that's how the urban legend goes. Uh, for the four characters in the film, uh, varying degrees, either doubt or believe in it. And they get to find out one night how real it is because they, they get caught out in one. Yeah. So that's the basic premise. Yeah, so I'll probably have to cut you there because um, for people who haven't watched the film, it would be better to know. I think uh, I think it's my professional, uh, it's, my, it's my personal uh, opinion that yung mga tao manonood ng film, uh, better off sila na less yung alam nila about the movie. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Although, although yun yung, that, that's like 1% of the whole film. <laughs> yeah, so, nga, I agree. In I agree. a way. So, 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 sa mga hindi pa nakakapanood ng film, I just want to let you know na we'll be dealing with with a lot of spoilers for, for the film. So if you haven't watched Midnight in a Perfect World yet, you can watch it on Upstream PH and you can always come back to, to our Facebook page, um, Unreal, Unreal PH, and our YouTube channel as well because the replays uh, would be uploaded in both places. So uh, don't worry kung, kung um, hindi nyo mapanood the whole live stream. But stick with us because we want your questions, by the way. Right. So, um, speaking of, you can you can start asking questions as we as we discuss uh, currently, uh, and we'll get your questions uh, later on in 
in this AMA slash Q&A with Dodo Teao. Um, right now, we're gonna play the trailer for the film so you can see so you get refreshed or so your memories get refreshed of what the film was about or is about. Again, this is Arman from Unreal PH, and welcome to our AMA with Direct Dodo Teo. Mahaga pa, anak. Gabi na. Walang aalis na hindi nagpapaalam. Ayoko pa pala mamatay. Mukhang bibig niya itong blackout eh. Random areas after midnight. Walang warning. Para siguradong may madampot. Tangin ang mga polis to. Data version ng martial law. Fucked up lang. Wala kang makikita ang bahay na walang bintana dito sa Maynila. Unless yun talaga hinahanap mo. Bahay na walang bintana? Minsan nandyan. Minsan wala. Safe houses. May ibang tao dito bukod sa atin. Gusto nyo bang makakita ng multo? Pag tinititigan ko yung Magic Star, parang tinititigan parang din ako. Parang aspilit lang ang LSD dito. Okay, pero um, safe naman, di ba? Ah! Ilang safe house to? What a trailer, dog. What a trailer. <laughs> so, guys, we're back. Um, and it's time to answer your question. So, are you ready, Direct? Yep, yep. Game. Okay, so I guess we'll start off muna with, with the standard questions that I know you guys have been uh, asking or okay, si Direct mismo have been asked many times but i would just uh, want to to hear your uh uh your opinion or your thoughts on on how the film came to be or how, how the film come to be like from from your end direct Uh, okay, uh, I'm agree. I mean, the whole premise of the blackout and this is the safe houses and second floor. Uh, that that I dreamt that. And so, sinulat ko siya. I, I, I keep a sort of like a dream diary for what it's worth. Ano lang, just, just, to, just to sort of like for posterity. And they didn't think much of it until much, much later, I was commissioned to do a short film. Uh, for an anthology about life mm -hmm. in the Philippines after 2016. And we, we all know what happened after 2016. So, yes. like, what was life like? <laughs> in the Philippines after 2016. So, uh, that was being produced at that time. And so, I was I was commissioned to, to come up with a, sort of like a horror take. On, 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 on the theme. So I sort of thought of that dream and uh, fictionalized it, tried to restructure it into a short narrative. Uh, but the project didn't push through for one reason or the other. Uh, and then it was just a matter of months before I was asked to pitch to Globe for possible film projects. This was in 2018, actually, the year that we started production on, on the film. So 
meron na akong ibang projects na nakahanda na. So, I was going to present that. But at the last minute, I, I made a very, very quick pitch deck for for Midnight. I, I, I'm not sure if it's what title it was under at that time. But it, was, it wasn't Midnight yet. But it was a, the basic premise about the safe houses and all that. It's basically the short. You know, one kulang na pitch deck yung short with the promise that I could expand it into a feature. Of course, at that time, I had no idea how to. But I just wanted to throw it out there and see if it could get traction. Tapos, in that, it was one thing that to another. That was the pitch that Globe liked. And so it was fast tracked. Uh, a few months after that, the script was done. And we were going to go into production already. Uh, I think the 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 major catalyst for the expansion was because when nung na nung na pagdiripan tyon for some reason, anad pa flash sa akin martial law, mm-hmm. curfew. Yeah. And it's it, martial law. I never experienced martial law as an adult. I experienced it as a very very small child. So and dating sa akin ng martial law ng curfew all that was para siyang ghost story. I was gonna say fairy tale pero kasi mayroon element of of fear. So para siyang ghost story, para siyang boogeyman. So it was much later that I found out what really went on when I was an adult na. But but I retained that 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 sort of like resonance ng martial law for me as as a as a ghost story. So, parang na-conflate ko lang siya with a dream. And that sort of spurred me into uh, the sort of aesthetic direction that I needed to, to, to expand the short into a feature. So, so basically, in a nutshell, it was, it was my attempt at making a, an actually making a, a haunted house film. In many ways, but I mean, different layers, siempre. Yeah, yeah. Pero uh, at its core, yun yung yun yung nangyare, yun yung nagim parang uh, it boiled down to that sort of strategy or that aim or thrust. Kaya sumimple yung trabaho for me. Napan ah okay, ganito yung approach. This is how I'm gonna do it. So yun. So so nagstay siya as a as a dream, a literal dream na panaginipan ko talaga yan. E, e, malinaw sa utak ko kung ano itsura nung... Hanggang ngayon, kung ano itsura nung ano, safe house sa loob. I, I, we tried to replicate it as much yeah. as we could. I was just gonna say, um, in many ways, it feels a lot, or or the film uh, reads a lot like a may, medyo dream-like, almost nightmarish oh, guy. Oh. I think sa jay, sa jay on on my part and on the rest of us then when we were uh para putting when we put it into production and we were sort of like figuring out what kind of tone and language it we would use for it i mean i think it was deliberate to have a sort of like dreamlike quality para lang maintain yung nararamdaman kong ah kasi medyo bangungot level yung panaginip eh. Kahit wala nangyayaring, doon sa dream, wala nangyayaring patayan. No? Pero, nagkising ako noon na pawis na pawis. Uh, mabilis yung heart rate, etc. Parang, so may ganun lang siyang sense na gusto ko i-carry over doon sa pili ko na. Hope, na hopefully, na ano, na nag-spill over. Kung ano. Yeah. I, no, I'm not the best judge kasi ano pero ayun. yeah so you mentioned kanina yung yung uh, martial law and obviously what's happening right now is i don't want to say similar uh, like flat out pero siguro reminiscent of 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 uh, what had happened during the Marcos regime and i'm not the only one saying that by the way it's uh, like a lot of people point that out um, so 
this I think you you answered it na naman na you you very much uh wrote this with a I guess a 2020 or post 2016 context. Um just like uh Jeff here who who asked in the comments uh did the government's war on drugs influence the film's screenplay in any way? What what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, obviously it did. I mean, I mean it's very obvious. Sa may isang eksena dun sa film na uh he had to recalibrate how it was executed kasi medyo on the nose siya. Mm. When it comes to and I I think for those of you who've seen the film you know what scene I'm talking about. Yeah. The Kendrick scene. Yeah. So that was very that's very very overt in terms of uh sort of like making a reference to the present day or mirroring the present day even was yung this... even yung dialogue na yeah sinabi ng character ni Dino Pastrana yeah yeah uh, that was that was pretty obvious so so yeah, i'm not sh- sure if influence is the right word kasi parang somebody asked me about uh yung politics in my films is including violence and Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think I set out to make a political statement in my films, but because we sort of live with it yeah. every day. No? It's a fact of life. Oh. Because the system that we have, I yeah. think it it, it 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 comes out whether you like it or not. Because not not just 2016 onward, but because Violator had actually had an EJK scene. If yeah. you remember, yeah, it it had oh, yeah, but that was written in twenty oh, oh, that was written in 2013. So, parang even that film when it was going around festivals, people were asking about the politics of the film, and I was answering. My answer was just is osmosis she, mm-hmm. okay, uh, everyday reality na namin yun, which is kind of unfortunate and terrifying at the same time. Because hindi na namin ini isip, lumalabas na lang kasi. Yan, yan yun eh. Yun yung reality natin. Eh. Tama, tama. And in the same way here, in fact, uh, to, to, to sort of like make a very long-winded answer to the question, uh, there was, yung, 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 because of, I was so sure of my stance politically with the mm-hmm. I was, yung, I was also very conscious of trying to sort of like, uh, parang, make it more subtle yeah. if I could. I'm not sure how successful I was. Because okay. there's a part of me that that would want for people to take the film literally also. Because I'm a genre filmmaker. I'm not just a political filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I don't even think of myself as a political uh-huh. filmmaker. I'm also a genre filmmaker. And that's the genre of my genre. Kaya ako mahal yung genre because it gives me the whole this wiggle room to yeah. literalize. Isa yun sa luxury ng, ng genre film. Oo, oh, eh. wow. y- yung wild ideas. And, and it would be, it, on, on one level, it would be interesting to, for me personally, uh, even as an audience when I watch horror films or like speculative fiction films, to take the films literally before I start assigning meanings to to the events in the film na ano kaya ibig sabihin nito ano kaya ibig sabihin nito parang parang doon muna tayo sa oo oh, oh, may may naglakaw ng buwan oo oh, oh, may bahay na mas malaki sa loob kaysa sa labas uh-huh. <laughs> oo oh, may drugs oo oh, oh, may ko ano man yung creature na nandoon sa forest totoo yun at ko ano man yung nasa second floor totoo yun all that may time loop parang all those things totoo muna and then Further down the line, so yeah, maybe we could dissect it. And, yeah, you know. that's a that's so, a really interesting approach. It's it's uh-oh. na parang i ano mo muna i set aside mo everything else, everything that happened in the film i factual, um well, well not factual or at least for now it in exists. the universe of the film yeah. it, it, mm. it's factual. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then sa kamo siya gawin, di ba? Oh, yun yung parang feeling ko responsibility ko as a genre of filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, and I, I have, I, I'm kind of iffy about uh, films that are burdened too much with 
semiotics na uh-uh. iba pala yung ibig sabihin niya. Uh-uh. Uh, personally, I don't operate that way. There are people who can make those kinds of films and make it make them well. But I'm probably not one of them. I'm more interested at f- on 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 one level dun sa mechanics ng genre. Yeah. So may may second question ako na like question ka talaga. I, I'm going to I'm going to uh, take this opportunity na rin to ask you. Um kasi yung yung scene where Jinka and Mimi step out dun sa ano dun sa, in, into total darkness. Pa, kasi ang reading ko doon, sabi mo ay mukha ng mga symbolism symbolism. Pero here I am asking about it. Um kasi ang, ang reading ko doon parang the fact that they are sort of unbothered members of the middle class. Parang may certain catharsis siya sa akin. So parang maybe looking at things at a macro level. Um, would you say na ano rin yun, parang in, maybe intentional or or deliberate din ba yun na parang um, these characters na medyo unbothered or ap- apathetic sa sa sitwasyon, which which is parang utopic nga yung Philippines, pero you have to, meron kang sinusunod na curfew or whatever, meron din, intentional ba yung catharsis or yung cathartic rush na oh, the audience, like myself, might feel towards that scene, yung scene na ano, yung scene na in total darkness. And also, can you also tell us about how you how you made that film as well? I know I know you, Jim, and Albert uh, worked really hard on, on that sequence. Hmm. Okay. Uh, first question: you, you catharsis is really not up to me. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, it it it's a desired effect. Uh, I don't think I, I, I wasn't really too keen on. Uh, well, gets ko yung sense of privilege na nararamdaman mo dun sa characters. Pero at the same time, kasi hindi rin naman sila totally apathetic in the strict sense. Like, si Mimi mm. is aware. Yeah. Hindi lang siya naniniwala doon sa blackout because it's too far out. Uh-huh. In, it, she knows that open season. She keeps saying open season ngayon. Mm. So, ano, si, si Glenn is sort of pro in a way. Mm. And I kind of yeah. like the way Anthony breaks down his character uh, because he thinks he's right. Pero he and his dilemma is how does how to process the fact that he's wrong. So so they're not totally uh, removed from 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 the reality yeah. or from having yeah. an opinion on the political reality of their world. Meron sila. It's just different degrees lang, yeah. different sides. See, Tonichi, of course, is the most passionate. He he he's the most gung ho. But oh. again, mostly because he has a personal stake. Nawalan siya ng girlfriend or kaibigan. Yeah. Diba? So, 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 yun. I, I, um, uh, pero pero that's, a, that's an interesting way of looking at it. Then. Uh, to, because yun nga, uh, um, um, the way I was very conscious of trying to see the film through my eyes when I was a child. Mm-hmm. So unaffected talaga ako, pero may awareness ako of there's something out there. Yeah. Which was, at that time, was curfew. Diba? Parang huwag ka lalabas. I mean, parang for someone like me at that time, hindi nga ako pwede lumabas ng gate namin na walang kasama. <laughs> so yeah. hindi talaga ako affected <laughs> ng curfew. Pero lumaki siya sa utak ko as this big black thing that happens after midnight. Oo. Uh-huh. So, yon. I was I was very aware of that resonance and trying to sort of recalibrate when I was writing it, you know, when I was making it. Yeah, so, and, yeah. And you know, how do how how did uh how did you guys uh, Jim Albert and Ikaw made the scene oh, happen? Or? Uh, <laughs> you, 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 okay. Uh, medyo baka let down tong sagot na to. Bali <laughs> kasi, <laughs> ang kailangan naming mag-shoot sa pitch black 
darkness. Yes. Na ang ilaw lang ay cellphone. So nag-shoot kami sa pitch black darkness na ang ilaw lang ay cellphone. <laughs> yun na yun. Yun na yun. And, and, I think, and I think yung backstory there is that because hindi kami big studio production. Diba? Kasi hindi, hindi, hindi siya simple. Eh. Yung, mm. Hindi ka pwede mag kumuha ng permit para mag-block off ng isang kali. Yeah. At patayin yung mga ilaw. Kasi may buwan eh. Pa- kahit, mamata- kahit brown out, may ilaw pa din. Eh. And I needed it to be total. Yeah. So paano mo gagawin yun? Kung big studio to, na maraming pera, iisipan niya ng rig, iisipan niya ng ibang pang mamahaling paraan. Pero since we couldn't afford, hindi na kami nag-overthink ng proseso. Yeah, because I think so, I mean, in the end it worked eh. Um, oh, I mean, meron, I mean, it, it wasn't totally just the cell phones. May tulong yan kasi like yung flip phone, mm-hmm. meron yung maliit na ilaw just to help. Kasi mahina ang, mahina yung emission ng ano eh, ilaw ng flip phone. Mm-hmm. Pero, Pero pag, pag yung smartphone, pwede mong itaas yung brightness. Ano na eh, pwede na eh, malakas yeah. na eh. Gumamit pa kayo ng so, gels or something? Kasi di ba may, may kulay wala. yung iba? Wala. 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 Oh, okay. wala. So, I mean, parang we we were very nervous about it. Kasi parang uh, uh, kung totoo siya, hindi sh- even, even, even yung actors were so I don't know if impressed is the right word pero sabi yeah. nila parang sabi nila um, na, nakaka-transport eh. Yes. Yeah, so, kami talaga na doon. Tapos parang ang rock and roll lang na nag, nag-shoot tayo sa dilim. So may ganun lang siyang vibe na parang, even on the day of the shoot, we, we shot in a studio, obviously, for more control. Yeah. Tapos, uh, yung camera is, was constantly moving. It was it was on on a rig na gumagalaw constantly. So, ang daming considerations. Kasi baka mabangga mo yung actor. Eh. Wala kang mm-hmm. hiilaw eh. Yeah. Hindi mo rin nakikita yung daan. So, And sa total siya ma, ma, ano, ma, malamig kasi to doon yung aircon. So, so may, medyo na-simulate yung environment. Pero in terms of actual technical stuff, there was, there was may konting fill, uh, fill lights na inaano. Pero uh-huh. yun nga eh, we couldn't afford anything fancy. So, we just had to work with the smartphone light. That, so, that was it. Ano ba siya? Parang yung yung paggamit ng studio and being literally minimalistic about it ay response ba yan sa like yun, sa pagiging small studio? Parang, because that's the impression that I'm getting na rather Pero, than uh, early on sa pre-prod stage. Uh, uh, sabi, sa early on sa pre-prod stage merong, meron pang plano to mock up the city inside the studio. Para lang may, may makikita kang mga hugis sa dilim. Pero parang sa akin, parang nakakadagdag yun ng comfort. Eh. Tsaka orientation yun eh. Eh hindi yeah. ko kailangan ng orientation sa scene yun or comfort. Gusto ko maka, madisorient yung audience. Agree, agree. Madisorient din sana yung actors. Diba? Uh-huh. Can, so, I, can and, I tell and, you how, what it remind me of? Um, It sure. reminded me a lot of Under the Skin, and one of our uh, one of our uh, members here sa Anil Movie Club, si Carlo, uh, Carlo Ron, he also mentioned na ano siya, um, reminiscent of Under the Skin, especially the the creature alien or the creature or alien. Um, was it fair doubt to ask what it was, or would you rather just leave it to the viewer's imagination? Yeah, it's an entity. That's all I could say. But and and I'll I'll I'll. Full disclosure, I, I, I think medyo may, may, may influence naman yung under the skin. Although yung idea of a black creature, mm-hmm. medyo may antecedent na yun before pa. Yeah. Marami na. Pero I, I think, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't deny that uh, I was getting a lot of inspiration from under the skin. But not necessarily yung creature na, na, uh, pin, na plinay ni Scarlett. But the whole film, mm-hmm. kasi yung aesthetic ng buong pelikula, uh, it, it's obviously very low budget. Yep. And it's something that 
that's if if you're a filmmaker in a third world country, it's something that makes sense for you to sort of like get inspiration from, not necessarily copy him, pero to to, because parang I, I always feel that it's 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 a dead end. Kung parang oh shit, ang ganda ng end game, peg ko yan sa gagawin kung pili ko na all that's kana. Eh. <laughs> kasi pera labanan dyan eh uh, and of course syempre mas malaki budget siguro nung under the skin pero yung aesthetic niya was very lo-fi yes and even yung structure ng pelikula even the way it was written it's it's very lo-fi it's very parang on the ground kumbaga so I was picking up sort of like a charge from the film but mostly for the way it was conceived maybe yeah yung, yung ganong klase yung ano yung, yung maybe structural, maybe uh, in terms of nuance at saka tone. So, yeah. yeah oh. Pero yun nga, parang I, I don't want to define it for anyone. I, I kind of want to leave it up to the audience what they think it is. Yeah, I have I have a lot of conversation with with other people of as to what the creature is. Parang, um, and my boilerplate response talaga is parang, In, in a film like this, we can't really know. <laughs> um, yeah. Diba? Because hindi nga natin alam which, which event actually happened or bilang may potentially may time loop, alin ba, aling version of the events ba yung susunod natin. So, um, this is the kind of film where yung sense of paranoia mo medyo na-amplify because of, because the events in the film itself hindi ka, you can't really trust. Um, yeah. Yun. Tapos, Since we're on the topic of influences, may mga questions din about influences. Sorry, Dodo, but uh, I, I don't want to reduce the work. Pero, um, uh, yun, uh, my question about influence, si, influences or forebear, si, si, Ron, si Ronald Cruz, sabi niya, one of the things that I really liked about Midnight in a Perfect World and your short film, If You Leave, ito yung short film na sinasabi mo kanina, is your use of sound to create a sense of dread. Can you talk about the importance of sound in a horror film? And if so, what what particular horror films do you think made excellent use of sound in this way? Mm. I mean, sound is everything in any kind of film, I think. Pero more so in horror, I mean, uh, it has to be done perfectly. I'm, I'm very fortunate that yung sound designer, ko, si Corinne, yes. is... Quite possibly one of the country's best, if not the best. And swerte ko rin na tropa ko siya, <laughs> kaya umo o siya sa mga uh, projects ko. But uh, yes, and uh, I think I think it's 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 very it's a very very important element of all cinema. And I'm not necessarily saying na. I mean, parang, uh, Hollywood is very guilty of over-sound designing their films. Yes, I agree with that. Too much. And that's bad. Minsan, something like, uh, I don't know, The Ring, the original The Ring, the Ringu, yeah. which has no, ha, has no score and has, m- makes excellent use of silences and that, yung tunog na yun na parang yung bakal na ina, ano? Mm. <laughs> For me, that's brilliant. That's brilliant sound design. It's it's really all about the yung tamang calibration ng ano, ng ng sound more than anything else. It's not whether it, it doesn't have to be. It, it's not it has nothing to do with the quantity of sound design. Yeah. At all. Uh yeah. It's, Ringo was a horror story, but I, I I keep thinking of Under the Skin also as a very very excellent use of sound design. May isang pelikula na hindi horror that I remember two films that I remember being very impressed by foreign films. Uh, yung isa ay yung Clean Shaven. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's, it's, I think it's a Criterion or something. Uh, and the other one was yung You Were Never Really Here. Mm. Lynn Ramsey. Mm. Pero to go back to Under the Skin, yung Under the Skin kasi ang ganda ng integration ng score tsaka sound design. Yung score ni Michael Levy doon parang halos anti-musical eh. Medyo may pagka-industrial. Tapos hindi mo siya ma ano, hindi mo siya ma-figure out kung scoring ba to or sound design. 
So, ayun. Uh, so, sa horror particularly, I think it's very important for the sound designer to be brilliant if possible. And yun nga, sometimes the, mo- the more excessive sound designers usually make the bad sound design. The worst kind of sound design. And I'm mostly referring to like Hollywood horror films na sobrang ingay, sobrang lakas. Yeah, when you can actually like hear the parang yeah, so almost like parang flexing, di ba? Parang, hey, oh, this is my yung, sound design. So. Oo oh, oh, eh. Yung parang hindi, hindi na nakakatakot. I mean, parang I remember watching Ringo sa Cine Manila when it came out. Mm-hmm. Sa Sinihan. And that was Grabe, the first Ringo. time. Wow. Okay. Oh, that was the first time sa Green Belt pa yun eh. Yung mga, Tagal na nandun. Yung, nasa, <laughs> yung nasa ano pa, nasa Makati pa yung Cine Manila. R.I.P. Uh, Cine Manila. Uh, Oo. So, first time ko na-experience yung ganong katahimik yung Sinihan. Yeah. And you realize na parang na-undervalue yung silence or yung when it comes to horror films. I mean, parang yung Quiet Place didn't quite cut it kasi mm-hmm. ko, for some reason it was still too loud. <laughs> uh-huh. Parang ang ingay nung oy, wala kaming sound design, no? Tahimik. Pero may ganong may ganong show of Yeah, very flexy. Oh. Vibe pa rin siya eh. Na parang, oy, tignan nyo. Baka ba minimalist yung sound design namin. Si Ringo was just matter of fact. Parang wala. Walang sound. Walang sound. True. So, so eh, I mean, I don't hope that answers the question. Yeah, it, it, it does. Uh, so, from the same person, I think medyo given na naman siya. Tinatanong niya, is HP Lovecraft an influence in any way? So, Lovecraftian horror naman ay, um, ano diba? Fear of Ever the since, Unknown. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, tsaka even by later and if you leave, we're sort of like inspired. Yes. Cool, cool. Um, more questions, Dots. Let's speedrun this. Because <laughs> there's Sige quite lang. a lot. Uh, meron from Abby Singson. Sabi niya, Hi, Direct. Which one did you enjoy Hi. directing more? Violator or Midnight in a Perfect World? Uh, it, magkaiba kasi yung experience. Eh. Violator was the first time kasi for me to direct film, a feature at least. So, iba yung, iba yung energy coming into that. Although I had the same team with me. So, ibang iba, ibang iba siya. And there was, there was also this uncertainty na parang tama ba itong ginagawa natin. So, but, but it was fun. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't deny that it was Uh, a fun shoot. Uh, Midnight was very different in a sense because we had, well, for one, we had a bigger budget. Uh, it was a different production company, but it was roughly the same team. Uh, we had a new production design team, but Mabilis kami nagkaroon ng synergy. Yeah. And now I'm going to work with them for the rest of my career. Uh, <laughs> But it was it was it was also very different because it was also more ambitious. Uh, yung violator, because we we did go to several locations, but there was this sense that we were sort of like shooting in just one. So we had that kind of we had that aspect yun. Because we really did shoot 80% percent of it in just one location. By later we uh, uh, midnight we were all over the place. Put up kami sa Subic, tsaka sa Batangas. Yeah. So it was it was a big it's a different rush. Uh, personally, I, I of course prefer for very personal reasons. I prefer midnight, mm. pero I don't think it's appropriate to mention why. Yeah. <laughs> pero for personal reasons, I was happier with midnight. Not because I wasn't. I was unhappy with my data. Pero may mga nangyari lang sa akin sa buhay ko because yeah. of midnight. But that was very fulfilling for me on a life level. Pero yeah. ayon. Uh, 
I think you know. <laughs> yeah, you're I, medyo aware ako doon. And people who listen to the podcast, I think, because you poured your heart out in that in that episode, I think um, the, uh, the listeners might be aware. And uh, I'm just really proud that you, like, you did this. And it's like more people are going to be able to watch this now because of Upstream. I mean, it's, it's such I mean, an easy uh, process. Add ko lang na parang to, to whoever asked the question. I don't know if this will be of interest. Uh, I think it's 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 the yung pinakamalaking difference between the two. Uh, and I I would even count if you leave, kasi parang sa if you leave may may degree na of confidence. Yeah. Na parang sa violator it was it was still precarious na parang okay pagkatapos ko bang ilabas yung pili ko lang to, meron pa ba akong chance gumawa or babalik ako sa pagsusunod. Mm-hmm. Because of what happened with the film that was, was received so well, suddenly, you, you, suddenly there was this, parang, I, I don't want to call it permission, pero there was this validation, okay, you can actually work on a body of work. What mm-hmm. else do you want to say? So may ganun na siyang, okay, sige, so I want to say this, I want to do this, make this film. So, may, may degree na konting, konting, konting of confidence. Although that, that sort of like feeling na alam mo na yung ginagawa mo, mm. you, it, yung, yung, then, sorry, yung feeling na hindi mo sure yung kung ano yung ginagawa mo, it always, it stays with you because you sort of like up your game each, each film. So, with, if you leave may ganun pa rin feeling na pa, tayo na tama ba itong ginagawa natin? <laughs> With Midnight, there was also, the feeling was also there, especially dun sa blackout scenes. Tama ba itong ginagawa natin? But because the stakes become higher, hindi talaga nawawala yun. And I think it's necessary to keep you grounded. Pero yun nga, meron, may, may, as, as you go along, you, you become more cognizant of the fact that meron ka na binubuong body of work. So, so the uncertainty of whether a career ka pa or a filmography ka pa na after this, it it after violator na wala na yun. Yeah. Na mer- meron na. So, so I think it's it's a different energy that you get from that. Did Did you shoot this film uh, pre COVID or post na? Ah, pre, I mean during. Pre COVID. Sorry. Pre COVID. Kapalit tapos at sobrang gusto ko na matapos yung COVID anyway. Um, Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. It, it was shot uh, latter part of 2018. I see. So Cause it my, took a lot while to yeah. post, post-produce it. Because my question, eh, bilang learned, ano ka naman, cinephile, well, um, and, <laughs> ano, and very involved cinema goer, I'm assuming, because I see you a lot in in festivals, which is like, which feels like a whole different era. A, lo- a long time ago. <laughs> um, sabi niya, Another if, world. <laughs> I hope I'm not bu- butchering their name. Uh, Iago Vergara says, sabi niya, uh, general question, but what do you think will be the future of the film industry or just the country in general once the pandemic stabilizes? Uh, okay. Uh, Siguro I'm, just the I'm, film I'm, industry I, bit. I don't, I don't want to speak for the film industry because maraming masalimuot na diskurso dyan ngayon. Ah, eh. uh, yeah. I mean, okay. practical realities na parang safety protocols, production companies more, pero yung ROI has become even more uncertain. Mm-hmm. Kung, kung uncertain na siya before, nung walang nanuluod ng mga pelikula na ng Pilipino Filipino sa sinihan except us cinephiles. Mas lalo na ngayon. So, yeah. so there's this whole uh, discussion between all departments of the industry that I don't want to participate or I don't want to speak for because yeah. it's still an ongoing Fair. conversation. Even ako, I'm involved in it in a sense because I'm, I'm going to have to work soon. Ayoko man, di ba? Ayoko man yung mas ng bahay. But I need to work soon. So I have to figure out Uh, these protocols, how they, how are they gonna like, protect me or whatever? So, madaming madami pang discussions, madaming mm-hmm. mga finer, uh, mga maraming nuances na ano eh, na that make it still a very unstable conversation. But I hope, hopefully, it's getting there. 
But I kind of want to talk about the film community in a sense because I think the film community might become stronger because of this. Yeah. We talk about industry. We talk about uh, filmmakers who make films because as a living. Producers who produce films to make money. All that. That's a, that's the industry. Uh, but but the community, I think, will become even more. Hopefully, become even more. Uh, I don't I recall the word na yun pero parang feeling ko uh, feeling ko hopefully yun yung mangyayari uh, um, and a lot of uh, 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 Filmmakers make writing again. Because if there's one thing the the whole the pandemic has. Well, one good thing is the hey, guys. Hello. Um. So I think Derek had a little bit of. Uh, Think, hello. 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 Hello, Derek. Ayun, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Na, ano ano na miss niyo? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, nag nag chopi ka ng around um when you're talking about yung uh, film community like uh thriving um interestingly. Okay. Well, uh, oh, hopefully yun yung mangyari kasi iba yung community sa industry. Yeah. Uh, I was saying something about productivity na mm. because of the pandemic, mas marami kong nasu- nasusulat ngayon. Yeah. Even if some of them are for for money. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i I'm writing for others yeah. for, to get to, to make a living. Pero hopefully this carries over, maging fallout to ng pandemic. Yeah. I was just gonna add dun sa community, um, because the yung access din mismo ay easier um, in mm-hmm. a way like right now almost globally if my VPN ka available si Sundance like before you had to like fly syempre dun, dun yeah. <laughs> sa place ni Robert Redford diba now you you're able to watch the the films there and you can join the conversation as they happen and then yeah. na sort of left out diba? so parang oh. I, I i also see that na the community or the discussion can yeah yeah and even nung ano nung first few months ng ano ng pandemic and mm. i'm i'm keeping it within the philippines ah mm, yung yeah. nagkaroon ng lockdown sa cinema club yeah and we had all these short films and films that were available to people uh i think that opened it up a little bit i think nagkaroon ng access to a lot of films that you a lot of cinephiles would yeah. otherwise have not had a chance to see. So parang hopefully that it means that the community being the cinephiles and the, the filmmakers will see this as an opportunity to make more films or to yeah. write more films and to get involved in more conversations about films. So so bringing it back lang sa, sa film, um, Ben Zaib, uh, I think this guy is from uh, uh, t- today I've watched. Um, he's asking. Okay, yeah, I know, I know Ben Zaib. I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah. So th- they're asking what's within the walls of the safe houses. Why are they moving or changing? 
Hindi ko rin alam. <laughs> to be honest. Pero I, I'm not self-deprecating when I say hindi ko rin alam. I, I, I think I'm, I'm Okay, I'm gonna answer in in a, in a very oblique way. Kasi parang when it comes to world building, kasi, uh, I think it was China Maivin, the the sci-fi writer, science fiction writer, who said this. I'm not sure uh, that when in 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 world building, especially in fantasy or science fiction, it's necessary to have blind spots, even if you're a world builder. So. Parang I, it's not a cop out. I think it's necessary for me not to know some of the aspects of the world. So yeah, so yeah. I, I I actually don't know <laughs> what's going on there. Yeah. But I I do have a guess. I do have my own theories about my own work. But parang to share it would do a disservice to to the audience. So. Uh, if I wanted that theory to be positive, I would have put it in the film. Yeah. So theory ko lang yun, your theory might be better than mine. And I will be willing to accept. A dami na nga nagsabi sa akin ng mga theories nila. And I kind of wanna just say, ah, oh yeah, tama ka dyan. Kasi mas maganda doon sa naisip ko. <laughs> so, so, and I think that's the fun of making something speculative like this. Yeah. You The, the, the author has his own theories about film. And I can actually answer a lot of questions very straight up kung ano to, ano nangyari. Ano. But parang if it's not in the film, I don't think I intended it to be... It's 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 withheld information. Kumbaga, yeah. Nasa I, 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 so, can, I can understand that, yeah. Hmm. I'm not sort of like uh, copping out. Not, not. No naman. So uh, I hope, I hope, I hope I don't Uh, it doesn't seem like I'm copying out of, from a straight answer. Though I think, like from our end as viewers, it's always fun to theorize about the, what happens in in a story. Mm. Parang part yun ng ng ano yun ng ng viewing experience. So like a lot of films even ask kung yung character ba daw ni Bing Pimentel because yung earrings niya ay kamukha no wonder drug na supposedly ma save sa yun. Parang does, does that mean plot daw ba siya or alay siya ng creatures of the film? So, like, that's part of the fun. Um, and I know... Yeah, it, and I, I actually like... I actually love that team. Whoever came up with that. So, yeah. Uh, that came from ano pala? From, from Kevin Tan. Uh, I think okay. Screen Kings yung, yung YouTube, YouTube channel niya. Um, but, uh, yun. Like, a lot of fun theories because, yun nga, yung, yung word, world na na-build nung film ay conducive to that. As all movies uh, are, as all good movies are. Yeah. 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 Ayan. Do we do we have any more questions, guys? Cool, cool, cool. I think I think we've knocked knocked off a lot of uh, uh, very good questions. So thank you to our audience for that. Um. Uh, Direct ikaw, baka you have something else or anything else that you want to that you want our audience to to leave with or like like any thoughts like in in conjunction or in relation to midnight in a perfect world well uh, well first of all i thank you so i mean uh this took a while coming out because we were working on it hard enough for almost a year Uh, and it's gratifying to for it to come out. Even on last year, it was very gratifying for it to come out and be received well. Uh, again, every every new film, naman, and uh, we sort of wanted to have traction. And so, parang this this was very uh, ng puso that people are responding to it. It doesn't it doesn't have to be. Thoroughly positive response. Just the fact that they respond to the film in some way gives it sort of a kind of substance. Not and substance life. in the strict sense, pero parang parang meron siyang say say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because people are responding to it, and I and I appreciate that. Uh, I totally appreciate all the theories. I, I I I'm scheduled to do some 
podcast uh, in the next few weeks that we'll talk only about the theories. I'm I'm really, really curious to find out what those what those other theories are about the film. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yun salamat for watching and uh, I. I I hope you stick around for my next, our next films, our next films, because we're, we're the, the production company and uh, we're in production on a lot of different projects that I'm, I, I really think people would be interested in. Pero yun, salamat, salamat for watching. And uh, I'm not sure kung may hindi pa nakakapanood sa audience, pero ayun, it's ongoing until the end of the month, which is February 28, I think. Uh, after that, I don't know where she's going. But it's it's going to be on upstream for the rest of them. So if there's man who's na umaali that you na hindi pa not watched, please. Do. <laughs> so, siguro yung mga questions na lang na na pa. Do you have time for for one more question? Go. I have time for more than one if you want. Okay. All right. Sige. Um. So Ronald Cruz, who also asked a while ago, said, "Fans of the Tracy comics have long clamored for for a live adaptation starring Liza. Um, now that you've worked with her and given the horror elements of the comics, is this something you're interested in making? Do you read uh, Bojetan's uh, uh, comics? Yeah, and I'm I I don't know Bojet personally. Uh, yeah, my friends. Uh, Bojet was sort of like a Bojet was sort of like a. Did I butcher Cheerle- his name? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that that cheer- cheerleader, when I was making my own, like we were, my my friend and I were making our own. So my chance form. direct. Uh, he. I don't know. Sorry. My chance. If he, ever. So sorry. So he's been so. I don't know. But uh, we. Wala na kasi. Mega gumagawa na. Eh. <laughs> so, so, ayun. So, pa, but I, I, I do read the stuff, and I, and I, I think yung nga very interesting yung 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 Trese in a sense because it, it sort of upgrades the quality of horror fiction. It's a yeah. and horror fiction includes everything, including cinema. Medyo upgrade na upgrade niya, and and I think it's it aspires to the same uh, ambitions that I have when it comes to the genre. That's why may kindred affinity ako dun sa, sa series more than the fact that I know the Jet person. So, yeah, I mean, bagay si Glyza dun for sure. Yeah. Pero, uh, it's, it's, it's out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think somebody owns the license to, to make a film out of it. Maybe a fan film director. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be on Netflix, di ba? Yeah. So, but I, I do, I am writing something with both Glyza and Jasmine in mind. I actually do sort of work work again with my the actors that I work with. Mm-hmm. I, I keep coming back to Anthony. most of them. Anthony's second time, and I with 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 Midnight. Uh, I'm willing to work. I'm, I'm so excited to work with the main cast again in different mm-hmm. roles this time. Not the same time, maybe not in the same movie, but separately. So Dino is, is was a revelation for me. Uh, although I, I did I did cast I did sort of handpick him for the role, uh, but he sort of like exceeded my expectations. Yeah. So Miss Bing, I have always wanted to work with, and see Jasmine and Gliza. If only because they make my job easier. <laughs> That's <laughs> the dream. And it's Anthony because I, I, obviously I wouldn't have cast him again if I didn't like working with him. So yeah, yeah. so so may, I, I am writing something with well, at least for now, some of them in mind. But in Prese Mejo, interesting. I, I wouldn't mind. Pero, uh-huh. I, I think it's happening. Maybe season 2 direct. <laughs> Pero animation yun eh. <laughs> oh, animation nga pala. Oh. Animation yun eh. Oh. Tapos direct, um, in connection dun sa casting, uh, Zebiana or Zebiana uh, asks, how did the casting come about specifically for this film? Uh, yun, may, may, may cert- I think it's fair to say that they were handpicked. 
I, I'm very fortunate because with all my films, I get to handpick the cast and I usually get the cast that I want. Sa Midnight, well, Anthony was probably the, the first actor I had in mind. So I was writing the Glenn character na siya na yun nasa utak ko. Mm-hmm. Because I, I had, I had, I've already worked with him and I knew what he was capable of and where to take him as an actor, as a performer. Si Dino, I, uh, I think even before I finished the script, I had him in mind because I all, oh, uh, I wanted to get him for If You Leave, sana. Mm-hmm. Tapos, ironically, my, well, I was thinking of getting Red who was if in if you leave for this mm, yeah. except wala siya sa Pilipinas nasa nagmi-miss Saigon siya so so i said okay si Dino kaya so yun si Jasmine and Glyza at some point they were up for each other's roles because originally si Mimi yung feisty si Glyza is si Jenka yung more spaced out mm. <clears throat> so i was thinking Uh, but I was familiar with her work. She glides. I I saw her in rock and roll, yeah. and <clears throat> from them, ko yung authenticity nung pangportray niya dun sa character na yun. Eh. Parang hindi siya para pag-uwi niya nakikinig siya ng ko ano yung tinutugtog nila hindi niya uh. <laughs> So I was very impressed with with that. Tapos si si Jazz, I saw her in yung pute. Hmm. Yeah. With Ian Venner, yeah, right? uh, and there were a lot of scenes there. So on Pisa, when she was just quiet, assistant she, no, no, no character ni Ian. So she was just in the room with him, helping him out some work. Pero ang nakastum presence. So I, I always felt that she was an actress that I could trust with silences. Mm-hmm. So there was a deliberate effort on my end to minimize her dialogue and just make her perform through silences, through expression. Through, um, and I think she pulled it off. Yeah. So may mga ganun na akong ano, in mind when um, si Miss Bing, I've always wanted to work with her ever since Kabisa. Yeah. And so, Miss Bing, I really love. Oh. Yeah. So, so ganun, ganun yung so far, medyo swerte ko in terms of casting because Uh, I get to handpick them, and uh, even if I wasn't really aware, na na I, alam ko na mistature na si Jas at si Glay, but I, I was mainly getting them because I thought they were really really good actors. But even yung 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 schedules nila, kasi yun yung magiging problema mo if you get like mm-hmm. celebrities mm-hmm. is yung schedule na hindi tumutugma pero even your schedule sort of like cooperated with us yeah so swerte lang talaga eh. and, and it, it I realized it only now and I don't mean this as I hope they don't take offense na shit stars pala to mga artista ko dito <laughs> para sa akin magagaling lang talaga sila eh. mm-hmm. pero ngayon when, when, when we came out last year And there were all these fan groups. I realized, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with movie stars, genuine movie stars. But I never felt that I was working with celebrities. I I always felt I was working with yeah really talented. serious, yeah. intelligent actors. Mark siguro siya ng ano? Mark siguro siya ng pagiging very good actors with when you feel yeah, and, and, uh, I, it. It's not just the skill. I think it's also the intelligence. It's the very very smart. People, mm. which is gratifying. Na parang and dali itawid ng gusto mong sabihin and 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 dami nila na dadagdag because nagiisip eh. So yun, I think that's a very very big thing. So yun, so I, I I might not be lucky with my next one. I might <laughs> not get to handpick who I want. Pero hopefully it continues. Kasi, right. So, siguro, siguro direct just to close it. Um, if if you guys have like more questions, uh, direct is is also a member of the of the group now, and you can just comment on this thread 
and you can drop your questions there and maybe Derek can can answer it later on when when he has time. Um, but siguro I'll close it na lang with with Ronald's uh, other question or other comment. Na sabi niya, my blind spot ang Joss was a brilliant line. To which I agree. Maybe Derek, you can you can explain how how that line uh, came to be. That's the uh, final question. Yeah, it was it's one of those lines na parang may blind spot ang Joss. Parang feeling ko galing sa Joss yung linya na yun. Kasi bigla ko siya na isip. At sobrang lumatag siya na maayos. There was another line in, in Violator that happened that, that came to me, although it came to me from someone else, from mm. a friend. Yung linya na hindi mo naman kailangan maliwala para maging totoo. Yep. Nasabi yun ng isang kaibigan ko sa isang inuman. Filmmaker din. Uh, Sabi ko na, si Jim Libiran. Mm. We, were, we were drinking. With, we were all filmmakers drinking This is way back, way back. And then he said that in one of the discussions we were talking about atheism and faith and all that shit. Yeah. And he said that. And I, I, I called him up when I was writing by later and I asked him if I could use it. So that and Brian Spotman just, just ah, while I was writing it, came to me. Parang, oh, shit. Salamat. <laughs> <laughs> May <laughs> pagka-blasphemous pa yung, sina- yung blind spot ng Diyos, pero parang galing sa kung saan man. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, it works on every level dun sa, dun sa film, I think. Oo. Yeah, you can easily argue it's blind spot din tayo. Mm. So, okay. yeah, parang yeah, that, that, was, that was a gift. All right. So on that note, we'd like to thank you, Derek Dodo, uh, for making you, our ben. first ever live AMA uh, possible. Um, and syempre, to... first ba to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Debut. <laughs> okay. Salamat. Sana meron pang kasunod because um, I feel like uh, live Q&As and AMAs um, are a really good way to to pick on your guys' brain. So because um, we can... Kaya pwede namin ano eh, pwede ka naman kaming mag, magbatuhan ng thoughts and everything. That's that's fun but also it's it's nice when it comes from from you guys as well. Um, and we'd also like to thank our thank our members of, of, of the Unreal Movie Club, our friends um, who have stuck around. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys on the next AMA. Thank you so much guys. Thank you Derek. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you Armand again for <laughs> having me. Thank you. Salamat. Next time ulit. Oo. Sige, sige. Oh, sabihan mo lang ako. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.